In this video, we're going to show you how to replace a driver side front lower control arm on your Dodge Ram located underneath the front of the vehicle. Using our 7-8 socket, we're going to head loosen and remove our lug nuts. Now that we have the lug nuts removed, let's go ahead and loose and remove the wheel and set that aside. Using a 35 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and loosen and remove our axle nut. I want to go ahead and disconnect our ABS wire here. Right on the back side of the fender line is a plastic button. Most of the time you can grab that and pull it off, but if not, you can use a trim tool like this. Simply slide it up and pop that off. That's gonna be your ABS wire connector. I wanna push up on this lock tab right here. Push that up like that. Then you gotta press down on the lock tab. Separate that. Go ahead and use your trim tool and pop this retainer out right here. Again, pop this out of our clips. And there's one right on the back right here. Just pop that out of that metal retainer bracket. And just let that dangle for now. Using a 21 millimeter socket, I want to go ahead and loosen this nut here for our upper ball joint. Now we're not going to remove the nut completely. I want to make sure that that stays on the threads here. So that way there, when we pop our upper control arm, these just don't separate and pop apart. We want to keep these retained together for safety purposes right now. Now we have a jack underneath our knuckle brake area here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it up, not touching it, but probably about maybe an inch away from the bottom. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to strike the top of the knuckle here. Now that we have this nut loose, once this pops, these two should separate. Then we can finish removing this nut, separating these two components. This is spinning with the ball joint. We're gonna put a wrench on the bottom here with a wrench on the top, finish loosening that completely. And we're using a 10 millimeter on the bottom here, and then your 21 on the nut. Go ahead and remove that nut, set it aside. Now at this point here, I wanna go ahead and separate these two. You wanna be careful when this separates, this is gonna come out. The whole knuckle will start to tilt away. We don't wanna have abnormal pressure pulling on this rubber hose here. This is where our securing rubber straps are gonna come in. We wanna go ahead and just kinda of anchor this off to the frame so it doesn't put a lot of pressure on this line. I'm going to use a 21 millimeter socket. We're going to go ahead and remove our outer tie rod and nut. Normally what you want to do is strike the knuckle here to go ahead and pop that upper tie rod in. Once that's loose, go ahead and pull that out and just set that aside. 
I'm going to use a pry bar, just pop one in, set it on the frame, upper control arm, lift up gently. And let that knuckle swing off to the side a little bit. Let's see if we can push this axle through. Let's go ahead and secure this knuckle. Tie it off anywhere you want that's going to be pretty stable. I'm going to run a securing strap around one of the studs here. You can use a block of wood on the back side of the CV axle here and go ahead and give that a few bonks. Go ahead and work that off the stub shaft. Now I'm going to push the axle through the center of the hub and pull that axle through. Go ahead and work that out. Go ahead and use a pry bar. I'm going to go ahead and lift up our upper control arm, push that knuckle back up into place. Let's go ahead and just get this started a few threads. And the purpose of this here is strictly to hold the knuckle with the brakes up in place while we disconnect the lower. You remove your securing straps for now. Using a 24 millimeter socket, loosen and remove the lower ball joint nut. Oh. Let's now remove the nut securing our sway bar end link to the low control arm. Our particular one is an 18 millimeter. And ours is spinning here, so let's go ahead and put a wrench on that. Using our 16 millimeter wrench, let's go ahead and secure that end link. Oh. I'm gonna put our jack under that control arm. I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slightly compress the suspension. That way they can go ahead and remove this bolt. Using a 21 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove the two caliper bracket bolts, one here, one up on the top. Now removing this, you wanna be careful. The whole caliper and the bracket with the pads will be now loose. You want to have some sort of securing strap. Let's pull off this whole unit. We want to go ahead and secure this up to the frame area. So we hung our caliper and bracket off of the frame using a securing strap. There's not a lot of tension on this rubber hose, so we're good, safe, and secure there. Okay, you can grab that brake rotor, slide that off, and set it aside. Go ahead and remove the nut on the upper ball joint. And we're going to hold on to this knuckle and hub, spin off the nut on the bottom. Once that's off, get it, remove the whole knuckle and hub assembly. Now at this point here, we're going to use our jack under our low control arm, put a little bit of tension on this here, raise it up and remove our shock bolt. Use a 21 millimeter socket, loosen and remove this bolt. Now we can go ahead and release the tension on our jack and lower that down. Once that's released, go ahead and set that aside. 
Our next step is to go ahead and want to remove our torsion bar. And in order to do that, we have to use a torsion key tool. And this goes into this dimple right here and clamps on to the top portion of this cross member. When we tighten this here, we're going to add tension to the torsion bar. That's going to allow us to go ahead, loosen and remove this bolt, remove the locking key right here. And then we're going to release the tension on this key, slowly lowering that down. And that's going to allow this torsion key and torsion bar tension to be released. We want to go ahead and start by marking our torsion bar in the key, making sure that this is indexed properly upon reinstallation. So we're going to use a marking crayon. Install your torsion bar key tool. I'm going to use our impact tool and we're going to tighten this up and we're going to add tension to this key and the torsion bar. Make sure you're wearing the appropriate safety equipment, safety glasses as necessary. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and remove this bolt here. In order to get our torsion bar set to the same spec as it came out, we're gonna go ahead and count the amount of revolutions that it takes to remove this bolt here. Now in our case here, in the rust belt area, our bolt is kind of stuck in there. I'm gonna go ahead and use a marking crayon. I put a nice point on this here. I'm gonna go up and I'm going to mark the threads right where it meets up to this locking tab here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my impact tool to now go ahead and remove that bolt. Now with our bolt out, you can not only see where the rust edge is, but you can also see our crayon mark, which is pretty much right on the edge there. You can now go ahead and remove that locking key. Now let's go ahead and use our impact tool to go ahead and slowly release the tension on our key and our torsion bar. I'm going to use my pry bar to go up inside here. Loosen this up. So the front torsion bar goes into the lower control arm here. I'm going to use my impact tool and just kind of hit right on the edge of the torsion bar and release that. That is now loose. Now on the back side here where the key is, you can see that the torsion bar is twisted into the key. We now want to go ahead and try and release the tension on that. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my sledge. I'm going to try and bonk the end of this here to break up some of this rust. Now at this point here that we have our key loose, we're gonna go ahead and grab the torsion bar, pull it out of the control arm, and we're gonna go ahead and tap our key onto the torsion bar. <clears throat> you see that our torsion bar is now removed from our control arm. So now we we'll go ahead and unbolt the control arm and remove that from the vehicle. On the back side of the control arm, we have a T60 Torx bit bolt head right here. This goes through, and on the other side, there is a 24 millimeter nut on that side. We need to use our T60 Torx bit on the bolt side here. Gonna use our 24 millimeter wrench here. Let's go ahead and loosen this.
I'm gonna leave the bolt in there for now. On the front side of the control, I'm gonna use our 24 millimeter wrench on the nut. I'm gonna use a 21 on the bolt side. Let's loosen this. Now, when you remove this nut here, you wanna make sure that you're standing away from the control arm because that's gonna release the tension and that's gonna swing down. Make sure you're standing off to the side when you're doing this job. Go ahead and support that control arm. And try and work out our back bolt here. Support that control arm. Make sure that it's leaning away from you. You don't want this to fall and hit you in the face. Remove that bolt. Get work that control arm off of the chassis. This point here, go ahead and clean off that torsion bar. Once that's clean, you wanna go ahead and inspect this bushing here, look for any dry rot splits or anything like that. If this is damaged or worn out, you wanna go ahead and replace that. Ours is in good shape. Let's go ahead and grab our new control arm and install that. Once we have that front bolt in, let's go ahead and line up the back one here. Just gonna give that a couple love taps here. Let's go ahead and get the nuts threaded on. Now at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and use our jack. And we wanna go ahead and put our jack underneath the control arm to hold us up into our preliminary position before we tighten these down. Set this up so we can get our torsion bar installed into the back of the control arm. Now we have our control arm in its preliminary setting. It's kind of pushed up all the way to the point where our sway bar end link is bottomed out. Our control arm here is pretty much level. Now to get this to line up here, I wanna go ahead and pay attention to the keyway and how we remove this here. Now we had marked this here, that way there, when we put this tension on this, it's gonna come up and it's gonna apply that tension like so. So with that, torsion bar lined up inside the control arm. Let's go ahead and give this a few taps. Set that inside and we're gonna work this out. Let's go ahead and get our tool lined up and in here. Make sure that our torsion bar is fully seated. Our key is gonna be able to twist up inside this bracket. We're looking good. Let's go ahead and tighten this here, bring our key up, and then I'll put our key lock in. Line up our key lock. We have our bolt here. We put some anti-seize compound on the threads. We have our crayon mark right here. So we're going to tighten this up until it hits the edge of that crayon mark. If you had counted the rotations, spinning it out, you simply want to go ahead, install this, counting the same amount of rotations it took to take out. Go ahead and put it in. Now 
All right, we're right at that crayon mark. This point here, our tool is actually loose, so we can go ahead and relax this. Pull that tool out. At this point here, I want to go ahead and snug down these nuts here for these bolts, but we don't want to over tighten them yet. We're going to finalize our torquing once we have the weight of the vehicle on the ground, and then we'll get underneath and torque these here. Now, before you push this bolt all the way through, that's going to allow us some room to get in here with our impact gun. Just snug that in place. I want to go ahead and tap this bolt through the rest of the way. Then we can go ahead and snug that one down. Install the nut on your sway bar end link. Once you get that nut installed, go ahead and put your wrench on the top. Snug down this nut. I want to go ahead and raise up our control arm. Get this lined up. Once you have that lined up, get that threaded in several threads before you put any power tools onto this. Once you have that on several threads, I'm gonna go ahead and snug that down. With both of these snug down into position, we're gonna go ahead and remove our pole jack. You can remove your floor jack. Let's go ahead and loosen the nut on our lower ball joint. So you gotta remove that protective plastic cap. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and slide our knuckle onto the lower ball joint as well as the upper. Let's go ahead and put our knuckle onto our lower ball joint. And we're just gonna get that nut thread on as far as we can. Go ahead, use your 24 millimeter socket. I'm gonna snug that nut down into place. Go ahead, run your ABS wire up through the back here. Line the brake rotor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use an extra nut just as a shim here. Go ahead and thread on one of the wheel nuts. And what this is going to do is hold the brake rotor in place while we install the caliper and bracket. Remove your bracket from the supporting strap there. Line your brake pads up and over. Go ahead and install the two bolts through the caliper bracket and onto the knuckle. Now you wanna go ahead and get both of these bolts started by hand first. Once they're both in, you can come back and snug those down. Once these bolts are snug, you can go ahead and remove the nut from the front of the rotor here. You're gonna take your axle, we're gonna feed it in the back side here. And once we have the axle into this area, we're gonna drop it down and we're gonna feed the splined section into the back here. Feed it into the hub and then push the axle up. Now at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and release our securing strap. And we're gonna to 
want to go ahead and manipulate our knuckle and our axle out and work it back onto the stub shaft as we push the knuckle up and in. Once it starts to go in, what we're gonna do next, we're gonna use our pry bar on the upper control arm. Raise that up. Let's go ahead and get that nut started. Next, what we're gonna do is use your pry bar. And you're gonna put it right on this little notch right here. We're gonna go ahead and tap this in. You're gonna be able to see, you're gonna be able to see and feel that that axle is pushed on all the way. And we have our axle coming through the front side of the hub here. Let's go ahead and install the axle nut. Go ahead and get the axle nut threaded on. Let's go ahead and zip that down. And use our 22 millimeter wrench and go ahead and tighten down the upper ball joint nut here. And that's good and snug. Go ahead and line up your tie rod end. You can get that nut started. Let's snug that down. Go ahead and straighten out our wheel. We want to go ahead and install our ABS wire. On the back side, we have the little retaining tab on the back of the knuckle. Push that into place. Press it in until it clicks in, and then press your red lock tab down. Press that lock tab down. I'm gonna feed this up and push this little button into the fender liner. And then press your little retaining button here into this tab. Before we torque down our control arm bolts, we wanna go ahead and compress our suspension to its neutral ride height. You can do that using your jack, raise it up until it just starts to come off of your jack stands. And then we can go ahead and torque down the bolts. Go ahead and torque down the bolts here to 150 foot pounds. Then you wanna go ahead and do the same for the front. Now, if you go to torque down this nut and it doesn't want to torque because the whole bolt and the nut are spinning, not a big issue. Go ahead and put a 24 millimeter wrench on that nut, use an 11 millimeter on the other side here, and go ahead and snug that down. Now you can go ahead and torque that. Once you have these two torqued, go ahead and lower your jack. Torque down your shock bolt to 100 foot-pounds. I'm gonna to torque down our lower end link here to 75 foot-pounds. Put your 16 millimeter wrench on the bottom there to hold that. Go ahead and torque down our lower ball joint to 38 foot pounds. Now you want to pay attention 
to the notch in the castle knot here, you wanna make sure that the hole for the cotter pin in the stud lines up with one of those notches. If it doesn't, you wanna just continue to tighten it until the next notch. Never loosen this here to line up the hole with the castle nut. Insert the cotter pin. I'm gonna bend that over and you can use your cutting pliers to go ahead and tap that over. Snip off the excess. I'm gonna go ahead and torque down the upper ball joint nut here to 40 foot pounds. Now, if you have the 1500 model series, you wanna go ahead and do this an additional 90 degrees. This is specific for the 1500 model. 90 degrees will be basically a quarter turn. Torque down your tie rod and nut to 45 foot pounds. I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter socket. Install two lug nuts. Thread those down as far as they'll go. Rotate that wheel. I'm gonna spin this around. Go ahead and put your pry bar between here. This is gonna create a lock for that rotor so it doesn't rotate on you. Once you have that locked, go ahead and torque down the axle to 185 foot-pounds. Go ahead and remove the lug nuts. set your wheel back on. Let's go ahead and get all of our lug nuts started by hand. Once we have all these on, we're gonna go ahead and snug them down. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. Good and torque down our lug nuts to 135 foot pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.